tell you about a very interesting man called Charles Booth. And he lived in the late Victorian era. He was a very successful businessman. He lived in London. And he decided that um, he wanted to make a difference. Uh, he had a very strong social conscience as well as being quite a hardcore capitalist. And he had an argument with the socialists because the socialists in London and in the country generally were saying that poverty in, in London was 20%. And he said, no, you're wrong, it's lower. I'm gonna prove to you and everybody that you're wrong. So what he did was two things. First of all, he dressed up as a very poor person and he went and lived among very poor people to get an understanding from the inside about how their lives were and what shaped their lives. And then secondly, he paid for a team of data collectors to walk up and down every single street in London to capture rigorous data on poverty in London. And he created this beautiful London poverty map, 1889, which is still with us. It's actually at the London School of Economics. That map showed that poverty in London was actually 35%. So he paid for the privilege of proving himself wrong. That map had an electrical effect on the whole of British society because for the first time, the leaders were talking about facts, not just stories and hearsay. And members of parliament could see in their own parliamentary constituencies where things were poor and where they were okay. So could their constituents. So when it came to voting time, it was very healthy. Likewise, employers. Frequently, they had employees coming to work who couldn't read or write or who were ill. Now they could see where actually it was vital to put schools and clinics. So this also, this also then managed to inspire the formation of pensions. And within 20 years of 1889, this country had a pension system, or a functioning pension system, which had an amazing effect on reproductive choice because husbands then were able to give permission to wives to go and get reproductive choice because they knew there was a pension at the end of it. So the women didn't then have to go and have 10 kids. And there was a safety net. So it all starts with having a clear picture, a clear vision of what is going right and what is going wrong. And then you get a tipping point for change. And that is wonderful. So this Christmas we're going to do a fundraiser. And the goal of the fundraiser will be to raise £38,800. And we need that money in order to be able to produce a coherent fundraising campaign to raise a further £862,000. And that money will then be spent in the UK to create maps that show clearly unemployment poverty and relating solutions, including, importantly, vocational education. And secondly, it will be used in Ethiopia to create maps that really help, massively help, agriculture, which is vital for food supply. So food seems to me to be the central connector, and it's something that we all have to have day by day. And it connects Ethiopia, and it connects the UK. It connects potentially starving farmers in Ethiopia, and it connects the unemployed here in the UK. And there's one group of the unemployed in this country that really speaks to my heart. That is the youth, the people aged between 15 and 24 years old and I've been thinking about this group and I've been wondering what they're going to have for Christmas dinner this year. Could it be a loaf of bread and a tin of beans? Possibly. More than likely. 960,000 youth in our country eating a piece of bread and a tin of beans for Christmas and it's very likely that they're eating that kind of food regularly. Really simple food. So what we thought we would do with our fundraiser is visit some really powerful people, some really wealthy people, some really important people, and give them a Christmas present, a tin of beans and some bread. And the objective will be just to make the point that this is what a lot of youth in our country, a lot of unemployed people in our country, are forced to eat day after day after day. And it will also make the point that we actually need the funds to be able to create maps that clearly show solutions to the same unemployment to help get these people out of unemployment and into sustainable jobs. So please join me. Please Twitter, use Facebook, use Gmail, use your own email account, whatever. 
please follow us as we run this campaign and please donate to help us gain this £38,800. Thanks.